thank the Lord for what he's doing in and through our worship team here in church. This morning, I want to share with us on, share with us what I title, Activating Your Fresh Season. Actually, is how to plunge into your fresh season. Because whether you activate it or not, there's a fresh season that is coming. And I am, I am excited as a person, I'm excited also as a pastor in this church, because over the next few, few weeks and months in our church, we're having towards the end of September our Arise Workers Conference. Uh, very soon, registration table will be um, active and alive, and then we can sign into that. But I'm expecting that we will have our biggest workers conference this year. Also in October, we, we plan to celebrate our 25th anniversary as a church. I'm looking forward to that, to see who is going to come into the house on the day to celebrate with us. Uh, not to talk about the All Nations Day, which is a bumper, bumper one. Not to talk about the food on All Nations Day. Possibly we might have some variety and, 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 and uh, spices we've not had in years. Who knows? With a church uh, over 50, 60 nations represented. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this event and looking forward to seeing what God will do through our house groups. Uh, and our life groups and purpose groups through the street level, go out in the night and minister to people? Is it the fusion that organize different events, family events, games and stuff like that? Exciting events that people who won't come to church normally come for such events. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing the testimonies from our house group leaders about the increase that God will open up to each house group. If you're a house group leader here, just say amen to that. You see, I'm looking forward to amazing stuff he will do in our church and the overflow into our Sunday morning services. I want to see the 9 o'clock service overfill to the point where we start thinking of another service, maybe in two, three years' time, at 2 p.m., who knows? And then we'll have the 9 o'clock, the 11 o'clock Worship team, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe then we'll have a bigger team, more drummers, more keyboardists, more guitarists, people to play the instruments. I'm not talking about someone coming from the moon. I'm talking about you signing up to be part of that. We might need more preachers because then... It would mean you have to preach four times on a Sunday. So maybe God will start calling some people into the pastoral office. There are exciting times to come. Anybody agree with me? Yeah. Exciting times to come. Tell someone, exciting times to come. You see, not just in church life and, you know, the things we do in church, even in your own personal life. I believe God is ushering us into new seasons. Already for my little boy, Jeremiah, is a new season because for the first time we're chucking him out of home and he's going all week to the nursery now. And uh, he's, he's done a trial run and the first day, oh my God, I almost wanted to say, can I have him back, please? But I knew he needs that season. New seasons are good. First day I went to pick him after, he did a trial in the afternoon, I went to pick him. And he was crying as I went to pick him. He wants to go back in there. <laughs> I'm like, come on. <laughs> Just one day and they've won you over. That's amazing. Fresh seasons are coming. You think your life is ugly. Wait until the fresh season comes. You're going to be as beautiful as ever. Yeah. Your time of joy and dancing and rejoicing are still on the way. The best times are not over for you. The best times are still on the way. You are about to step into the best and better season of your life. I'm speaking to someone positive words because that's what I believe is going to happen. You know, um, the darkest hour is always shortly before dawn. I know sometimes when we talk about new season, it just looks like see if it's negative to positive. No, sometimes... 
It could be that you are in the brightest hour of your life. But the Bible says that we go from glory to glory. Yeah. It says the path of the just is like one that shines brighter and brighter. Even if you're having a fantastic time right now, it can be better because God wants things better for you. God wants things better at your workplace. He wants things better in your family. He wants things better in your career. Irrespective of where you are, our God loves you so much, he wants life better for you. But again, if you are in the darkest hour, if it looks like the whole world is crushing down on you, if it looks like you don't understand what's going on, I've got good news for you. Shortly after the darkest hour comes the dawn, good times are still coming. You just have to hold on to that hope and expectation. I like this scripture in Isaiah chapter 43. It says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. That sounds like our God. He, he likes doing new things. He likes doing fresh things. God likes doing things that will blow your mind away. He likes to sometimes organize a good and pleasant surprise for you. God likes doing things, the same thing, in a different way. He wants to heal the sick. Sometimes he tells them, rise up. Or sometimes he tells them to go and wash their eyes at the river. Or sometimes he says, I'm coming to lay hands on you. Other times he says, I don't need to come and lay hands on you. I'll speak from wherever I am and you will be healed. God likes doing the same thing in a different way. So how can you expect to live life experiencing the same old, same old? That's not pleasant. That's not exciting. I know some of you came in this morning and you got a shock because your favorite seat is nowhere to be found. <laughs> I could see it on your faces. It's temporary. Next Sunday, your favorite seat will be back. <laughs> Except we have another wedding during the week. But you know, that's how we are, we are programmed as, as humans. We like the same thing over and over again, that same place where I used to sit down. If somebody else there sits down on that same seat, you give them the look that can shift them 10 meters away from there because you don't want something to change. But God likes doing new things. I like new things. I like fresh things. You know, I like moving things around in the house for the sake of moving things around in the house, you know. <laughs> If, if, I'm not, if I don't have the money to buy new things, I turn the old things around and make them look new. You know, it seems like you have a new thing in the house. Because newness around you, it affects the way you think. If you're going to step into a new season, you need new thinking. You need fresh thinking. If you can't change your thinking, you cannot change your world. A woman who was in a big, big financial mess and trouble, and she met a prophet, and, and she said to the prophet, I don't have anything in the house. And the prophet said, you've got something in the house. Oh, yeah, maybe, but I don't have anything. Just some pot of oil, small oil. Yeah. And the prophet said, that's enough. Yeah. We can use that to turn your life around. Wow. She said, I had nothing, but in actual fact, she had something. Yeah. Don't let your thinking limit you. Don't, don't let your mindset limit you. Open up your mind. There are new things, greater things ahead of you. Hallelujah. I shared this story in the first, uh, in nine o'clock service, and I, and I like to share it again because I think it's just relevant. One of our members in church here came to me a couple of weeks ago and said, I just applied for this job. I wasn't even serious about it, and I got the job. And, and they invited me for interview, and I went for the interview. And I even forgot the day of the interview. But somehow I passed the interview, and they called me two days later to come and take up the job. And I said to her, so what are you waiting for? I'm not sure. I said, what are you not sure about? Well, my previous job is it, it, where I am now. It looks OK. My boss likes me, and I like the place. There's a kind of security. I said, did you pray for this job? He said, not really. Did you work hard for it? She said, not really. I said, don't you think God is behind this? Because that's what I call favor. What you did not labor for. And then they rang her two days again. 
and said, well, we'll give you a pay rise over whatever you earn where you are. And then she came again and said, can we pray? I said, pray about what? <laughs> to find out if it's the will of God. <laughs> if you're here this morning listening, I'm sorry, I'm a preacher. You can't do anything right now while I'm here. <laughs> and I said to her, let's pray, because somehow I have to pray. So I prayed, I said, the Lord says you should take that job. <laughs> You know what she was fighting against? Old thinking. Because you've been at that job for such a long time and you earn such amount of money and blah, blah, blah. And God opens a door wide. I'm not saying every door that opens you go through it. But you can see that this is God's hand. You can see this is God's favor. And, and, and because of old thinking, you're still staying back. You're still sitting back. And there are things that we can venture into. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, you don't want to go to your grave and then you're thinking about the opportunities that you could have taken that you did not take because of old thinking. Because you were scared of stepping out into a fresh world, fresh environment, fresh, fresh atmosphere. And you don't want to seize the moment. And you know what? She decided to take the job Two days later or so, she got into office, you know, and then they said to her, this company is being made redundant. And her boss said, what are we going to do now? She said to the boss, well, I have no worries. I just got a new job. <laughs> and, the job and the boss says, when did you get it? Well, it's been ongoing. <laughs> it's been ongoing. And I said to her, you cool? How, what prayer will we be praying now? God opened the door you did not walk through it, and now you're praying. You see, what we do as Christians, there was a man who was lying down in John chapter 5, lying down at a pool, and the Bible says he's been there for such a long time. And it was the tradition that an angel would come stare at the waters, and the first person to jump in would get healed. And the man had been there for such a long time, such a long time, and, and all he knew was that system of healing. That's the only way I can get healed, if I can jump in first. And there was another man who was healing, mobile healing, walking around. His name is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Free healing. You don't need to queue. You only need to push your way through the crowd and, and get, get what you want. And Jesus was all over the place. And Jesus even came to the man where he was lying down and said, will you be healed? And he said to Jesus, sorry, you don't understand my situation. I can't get healed because I don't have the strength to jump into the pool first. Yeah. Say with me, fresh thinking. I need to change my thinking if I'm going to change my world. If I'm going to step into this new season, you know, God is doing great things in our church, and he'll keep doing great things in our church, but you can sit down and be a spectator. And people are coming in and being part of the worship team. We've got new people playing the guitar now. We've got new people playing the keyboard, and you applaud them. What is God saying to you? What's the new thing you can be a part of in this church? I know what hinders us sometimes is I can't, I'm not able. Pastor Paul told us last week, let's ditch the I cannot attitude and, and embrace the I can attitude. Yes. Let's ditch that. Let's ditch that. Even if you've never done it before, give it a go. Give it a try. See what happens. See what happens. I'm a, I'm a sports enthusiast. You know, in Liverpool Football Club, two players, James Milner, um, what's the other guy's name? Um, <laughs> Daniel Storage. Yeah. James Milner, midfielder, can you play left back? Yes, sir, I'll play the left back. Uh, uh, Daniel Storage, can you play on the outright, you know, wing? No, I'm, 
I'm a center forward. Same club, different attitude. Same players, different attitude. One is saying, put me in any place, I'll give it a go. Another one is saying, if you don't put me in number nine, I can't play. Don't be a cannot person. Be a I can do person. You never know what you can do until you give it a go, until you give yourself a try. I'm the kind of person, growing up as a Christian, found myself in this church, and there was nobody to play the keyboard. And we bought a brand new keyboard. Pastor got some money, bought brand new keyboard, drums and stuff. And the keyboard will bring it and display it. And we will all be clapping and singing. And one day I said to myself, a thought, you know, sometimes God speaks to you by dropping a thought in your, in your mind. And he dropped a thought, you can do that. No, I can't. I remember many years back, as a teenager, I had gone to sign up for a music class, and they told me it was not my, <laughs> not my line. <laughs> Not my line. And, and that came back to my mind. I said, no, I can't. I'll give it a go. So I gave it a go. I started 3 a.m. in the night. I'll be rehearsing 3 a.m. in the night. I'll be pa, 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 A, A, B, B, C, C, whatever it is. Just, 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 be, just be playing there. The people that were singing did not know any better. I was off key on the keyboard. My voice was off key. The people were off key, but we had a great time. <laughs> you know what God is looking for? Willingness in your heart. A readiness to say, I can do this. It's great to know after the nine o'clock service, somebody walked to the mission, uh, Manchester mission table there where we work with the homeless and said, I have been thinking of volunteering and being a part of this. Can I sign up now? I was happy to hear that, yeah. that after that message, somebody decided to do something yeah. about what they've heard. It's not like God has not been speaking to us. It's just that we have not been acting on it. We haven't been doing anything about it. We've let ourselves get limited by the things around us, by our experiences, by what we think we can do and what we cannot yeah. do. And that's not right. In our church, there's so much to do. You can come into this church and think, it's a big church. They've got everything. No, we don't have everything yet. We may have all the resources. We may have all the money. But we need people. People are more important than money and resources. If we've got people, I tell you, there's no limit to what this church can achieve. We need people who will be a part of what we do in the fusion, who will be a part of what Jesse is doing with the young people in our Winton Club, in our Breakfast Club. We need people who will drive our minibuses. We have Dan, poor Dan. He's been driving the minibus every Sunday. I've got Rob here. Rob is one of our minibus drivers. And, and by the way, these are not unemployed people. These are well-employed professional people. And Dan will, uh, Rob will fly in sometimes from Hong Kong on a business trip on a Saturday night, Sunday morning. He's behind the wheels of the bus taking people from Swinton down to church. And then some people come to any of the pastors and say, I need a, a reference, a job. I, I just got this job. They need a reference. And they come to the pastors and they say, can you write a reference for us? And I can admit I've known this person for three years, but I don't have anything to write in the job reference. I don't, what do you do in church? I, I need to reference that you're doing something. The other day I wrote a reference for one of our uh, Voice of Africa member. I wrote a reference, beautiful reference, and, and they told her, of all the references that we got back, this is the best. Wow, come on. I took my time. I took my time. I took my time because this person for two years took her time to serve God in this place. Yes, so I took my time to write the reference. Yes, yes, yes. But there are other people, I don't know what to write. I may take all the time in the world, there's nothing. 
to write. <laughs> Don't wait until you have a need for such and you start thinking, what can I quickly do to put on the reference? No. <laughs> Fresh thinking. Number two, and then I'm rounding up. Seize fresh opportunities. Seize fresh opportunities. I was talking about this woman who had been diseased for 12 years. And she heard Jesus was passing through her town. And she said, I am, I've been diseased for 12 years. Because of tradition, I can't be found in public places. But I'm not going to let tradition limit me. I'm going to break through the tradition. I'm going to break through the difficulties. You know, I'm going to push. And we haven't actually read that anyone specifically, I even believe, this is my theology, that after that woman pushed through the crowd and touched Jesus' garment, that other people realized that that was possible. By touching him in faith, you can get healed. And so the Bible says in other chapters, the multitude were seeking to just touch him. But one woman started it. Listen, there are ideas. I was speaking to our newest mother-in-law here, Jenny Taylor. What a beautiful design she put up for the wedding. And she said to me on Friday night, I have some ideas that I will bring out I did not release. But I said to her, once that idea is out, it becomes public possession. The idea you haven't released is not public possession. But once you release the ideas, other people can access it. There's some of us, God has deposited ideas within us, but we are looking at other people and equating ourselves with other people. But you are unique. You are different. You are special in your own way. There's something you will do that others will copy. But because you've always looked at others and not looked at yourself and thought, I can seize the moment. I can seize opportunities. I can try it. Listen, people never talk about people who sit down and do nothing. They talk about people who do something and fail. You know the armchair critics? People who sit down behind their television and criticize everything everybody is doing. Nobody ever criticizes them because they never get to do anything. So when people are criticizing you, just be happy and rejoice because you're up to something good. <laughs> you know what? I like this. Don't wait for extraordinary opportunities. Seize common occasions and make them great. Sometimes you're looking for that big opportunity, but opportunities are passing by every day. We only need to seize them. One of the things you will ever need in your life is people. There are people all around us. I was sharing in the nine o'clock service as I begin to round up that there was a man, gentleman, who came for the wedding. And uh, I didn't know who he was, but something said to me, just say hi to that man and find out how he's doing, ask him if he's enjoyed the service and all of that. So we engage in conversation. And then he opened up and said to me, this has been a wonderful, terrific service. And then he said to me, you know the guy who is wedding? I said, yes. So I want you to look after him. His dad is late. But because his dad was good to me, I flew all the way from Nigeria to be in this wedding. And I, I hold him like my son. Can you please look after him for me? Um, I knew there were challenges along that line to look after a grown-up man. But I said to the man, I will try my best as a pastor. I'll do my best. So the day after, I was speaking with the, with the groom, the guy. And I said, do you know such and such? I met with him and I spoke with him. He said to me, you know that man? This is who he is. So I went on Google and Googled the man's name. And it turned out that that's the man I've been hearing about him since as a child. And I never thought that one day I would meet with this man. But that man was right there next to me. I never knew. But following the prompting of the Spirit, 
I connected with the man that I've been reading about for many years. And there are people around us, we judge them because of the way they look. We judge them because of the way they dress. We judge them because of, and we look down on people. But that might be the next person that will lead you to your next breakthrough. I don't know if I will ever meet this man again, but I've, I've said in my heart, it's great to have more people for you than against you. You need more friends than enemies. Anybody agree with that? Anybody agree with that? And you know, at the end of the first nine o'clock service, another person met with me and said, you know, that thing you said resonated with me. In my workplace, I've got a boss who shows me so much favor. Every other person in my workplace don't seem to get that favor, but I get from him. I say, well, that's God. When God decides to favor you, that is the workings of God. And God is bringing people into your life. Over this September, October, November, December, God is bringing opportunities into your life. God is bringing people into your life. People that you will connect with them. People that you may lead to Christ, you never know. People that you might be a blessing to them or people that might bless you. We either bless people or they bless us. But God will bring people into our lives. We need to be sensitive. There are opportunities that are bound. Listen, the next dream job you're talking about, you only need one person to reference you, and that job is yours. The next thing you think that is difficult for you to get, you only need one person in your life. You know, Pharaoh had a dream, a powerful king, ruler of the empire, but he didn't have anybody in his whole kingdom to interpret his dream. And then here comes a man named Joseph, a prisoner, a convict, who came and said, I know the interpretation of your dream. The people we despise may be the people that will unlock the door to our next destiny. We've got to change the way we think and begin to respect people and begin to love people and begin to appreciate people and begin to build relationships and begin to tell ourselves, I am not finished yet. This is just the beginning of my life story. And I said something that Pastor Paul's book, The Rubicon, he didn't leave those things so he could write the Rubicon. 19 years ago, he didn't go through those things so he could write the Rubicon. 10 years ago, he didn't do all those things so he could write the Rubicon. He only realized that all of these things that have happened, I can write a book out of it. Listen, that test in your life, you can write a book in the next one year, in the next two years. You're coming out of it. That challenge, you will overcome it. You might sing a song. You might write a song that we will all sing. You might write a poem. You might set up a foundation in honor of that situation you're going through. But it is not over yet. It is just the beginning of what God has for you. And finally, let's look at that slide, which I love. Hot. Hold on. Pain ends. Hot end. Tragedy ends. Nothing lasts forever. Anybody here, you're going through a circle of pain and challenge and difficulty? It will come to an end. There's a new season coming for you. I'd like to pray with you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. I don't know if this word resonates in your heart, but I believe that God is positioning us as a church for one of the best seasons ever. Not just as a church, but also individuals in our lives. I see people here who will be getting married in the next few months or so. You haven't even met the guy yet, but wait until you meet the guy who says, I've got all the money in the world. I'd like to marry you in two weeks. And you say, please, can you see my pastor first? (laughs) Anything is possible. Anything is possible. You've been behind on your mortgage. What if someone comes and pays it all off? It's all possible. What if you get a job that pays it off in three years? It's all possible. You want to stand up if this word resonates in your heart. I speak possibilities, Lord. Father, we pray that you will open opportunities. You will open the doors of opportunities. Father, irrespective of where we are, irrespective of our challenges, of of our situation, irrespective of the difficulties that we face, 
irrespective of our struggle, irrespective, Lord, of the darkness around us. Right now, we believe that you can make a way in the wilderness. You can even create rivers in the desert places. We know that, Lord, you can open the doors. We know that, Lord, you can bring the right people into our lives at the right time, at the right moment. We know, Lord, our lives are in your hands. Our times are in your hands. I pray for those who are struggling right now, really, really struggling. I pray for those who are in their darkest moments right now. I pray for those who are contemplating on giving up. I pray for those who right now are in confusion. I pray that hope will rise up like a big, a mighty overflow welling up from deep within like a mighty stream let hope rise up let courage rise up let confidence rise up let boldness rise up from within them we will step out of this place knowing that we can do it we can achieve it we can accomplish it thank you father for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.